Okay, so we're live, and um, okay, so Buddha said that uh, you transcend the world of suffering if you become enlightened, old age suffering and death if you become enlightened, or if you're familiar with uh, Muji's work, that which observes everything that passes in the world of time and separation, that is not affected by anything that's happening. So when, if, if one is in the witnessing state, even if the body falls over, it's not you, you see. Or, uh, so there is no effect. Or what, if there are thoughts, they're not your thoughts. So that, that is, so that you have transcended karma. In that state of pure witnessing or oneness, there, there, is, no, there is no suffering from karma. Because only, that which can only suffer karma is that which is identified as limited. Yes, uh, if this makes sense, yeah. Okay, so what does cancelling of beliefs do and how does it relate to karma? Well, one's belief systems, or you could say the unconscious and conscious mind, is one's karma. Yeah? You know, like the thoughts, even you can say the body is uh, it's symbolic. Everything, everything, you could say that thoughts or form is that which is karma, which creates um, the, the experience of separation. So that is one's karma. You could say there are certain, there, you know, the ego package, you know, part of the form of the genetics, uh, the karma of the genetics, you know, part of it, so part of it is the belief systems, like, you know, I believe in scarcity or I believe in abundance. Uh, so, all of this is the karma. And if you go, you know, uh, if you do kinesiological research or past life regression with hypnotherapy, we know there are past lives. So, you know, like, uh, uh, if, you know, like I often share in my, in my videos here, uh, like I realized when I started going to spiritual groups, I'd lose my scarf and my hats. Like my, my, hat, my scarf would disappear when I'd go to spiritual group with my hats. I'd look around and no one would know where they're gone. They'd just suddenly like vanish. <laughs> and I used to buy like expensive scarves and expensive hats. And then I realized with karma that I was probably like a temple thief. I was probably a temple thief. I probably like stole people's hats and scarves and shoes in, in Hindu temples or Muslim mosques or Christian churches. And so now they, they, things go disappearing. So that's like a karmic karmic thing, you see, but if it's personal, you know, or you may find that, you know, if I was a thief in a last lifetime, people keep robbing me, you see, all the, these are, these are karmic things, and the karma, the karma, the belief systems, or the, like the, the Course also talks about it as well, the guilt, you see, you have belief systems, because if we're all one, and let's say I knew you in a past life and I stole all your savings, it's, it, uh, you know, on a certain level, there's guilt. The soul picks up guilt. Uh, or, you know, you could say, uh, the, you could say fear. I mean, of course, I'm sort of fear, but fear could be, uh, there's, as, there's different grades of fear. There's shame, guilt, anger, uh, pride. These are just shades of fear, uh, the experiencing mm. of separation. So, you know, so if I stole... But there's some level the soul picks up guilt and has a belief system that I'm bad, and if there's a lot of guilt, symbolic, symbolically guilt requires punishment. So I'm going to attract, I'm going to have belief systems. Well, you know, to pay off that guilt, maybe, you know, I need, if I'm not going to do spiritual work, someone, you know, I can pay that off by someone, the universe manifesting someone stealing my money. See, and then I've paid, I've now experienced what it's like to do that to myself you see, it comes back, you see, or, as they sort of say, um, a lot, you know, a lot of the great spiritual traditions are undoing karma by good works, you see. We talk about uh, doing, doing good deeds and positive karma, you know, like, uh, let's, you know, I've accumulated a lot of bad karma, you know, like, uh, I'm an overeater, you know, I'm an, I'm an addict, you know, like, how am I... How could I redress the balance of causing suffering in the world to myself and others by being a compulsive overeater? Well, you know, 
what would be the perfect karmic balancing would be maybe to join a 12-step group to do with food and to help other overeaters overcome their overeating. And so that rebalances the, the karmic load mm. of, of being in separation and creating harm. So you know, a 12-step group is automatically doing that. Uh, you know, uh, Christianity would like to do service, to do goodwill, to, to have, love thy neighbor as thyself, or uh, uh, do positive karma. And that sort of, that undoes the karma. So cancelling a belief, so if you have a belief that I deserve to be, I'm bad, I deserve to be punished, if you cancel that belief, uh, then uh, y you're erasing the karma. Because the, your belief systems and, what you, and the emotions are your karma. So if you just delete it, you no longer need to pay that off, because you've deleted it. You've now returned to, you only experience that, your karma is your identification, what's currently still identified within the ego package. So the belief systems are all going to create limitation and experiencing of limitation. If I, uh, you know, if I believe that um, I, you know, if I believe I could never be happy unless I've got a mate, you know, then if I don't let that belief system go, then the universe will be teaching me constantly. So then you say, okay, here's a mate, and then she's gone. You know, So you have a belief system that you can never be uh, at peace or happy unless you have something. The, the, the world, you know, kar karma is always um, belief systems within that you are often to do with securities within the transitory realm. Mm -hmm. You see, like, I am my body, or I need money to survive. <coughs> Or it's, it's okay, it's all right. It's, it's all right. Uh, so all these transitory things. So once you cancel the belief, like can, you know, God did not create it, it so it is not real, is such a strong statement. Or I cancel my belief, like I cancel my belief uh, in kidney failure. I'm an infinite being. Or God did not create kidney failure, and so it is not real. You kind of vanish it, you know, because eventually the belief, like the Course sort of says, if you keep doing it, it just vanishes from your thing. Mm. And then when it vanishes, it just, uh, it just disappears. And then when it, my experience is when it disappears from your head, it also disappeared from my existence as well. But it doesn't really matter. You know, if you cancel your belief in kidney failure, it may vanish. Or even if it still stays there, you wouldn't identify with it. Okay. So you still wouldn't suffer. You'd win either way, if that makes sense. Or if it's like, I can never ever be happy unless I have a mate. You know, if I just cancel my, God did not create the need for a mate to be happy, so it's not real. You know, if I keep doing that, then eventually that belief system will be erased. Yeah. And it's been like, if you, you, you've got a partner, you're happy. You haven't got a partner, you're happy. Mm -hmm. But if you've got that belief, mm. if you haven't got a partner, then you're, you're unhappy because you've still got that belief. So you've got to like dissolve it. Yes. Then you transcend that. Then whether you have one or you don't have one, doesn't matter. You see, you've transcended it. Or, mm. or mm. if it's an illness. When, you, when, you, when you're experiencing suffering, it's because your ego is identifying, because it has a belief. You know, I can't be happy unless I have money. I can't be happy unless I got my bank account is X amount of money. Then, you know, the universe will end up testing that belief. Because you think, I need, I need a million pounds in my bank, uh, otherwise I'm going to be like, afraid and in fear. So, you have, so eventually the world will give you a lesson where you have less than a million pounds. So if you delete that, you'll, still, you, you, you'll realize you, you don't, your happiness is not based on that. See? Mm. And actually, as the Course says, your security is based on the connection to Source. You know, what is your, or as Hawkins would say, it's like your consciousness level. When you're in the flow state, when you're in the, when you're in the observer, when you're in the non-dual, when you're experiencing non-duality, everything flows. Everything flows mystically. Uh, I think uh, Muji had, I thought Muji had a lovely story. It was it like he, um, he told the, he was on benefits and he told them something like, uh, they said like, have you, have you applied for work? I mean, I'm just, 
as I can remember, he said, like, no, I didn't apply for any work. So they said, okay, you were cutting your benefits. <laughs> you were cutting your benefits. I can't remember if I get this right, but it's something like this. I mean, there are people who may know the story correctly. I remember he was, like, going out, and then uh, uh, it sort of like he was kind of, like, homeless, and someone offered him a banana. Someone offered him a banana. And that was, like, the universe sort of saying, don't worry about it, you know. It's the universe that provides the bananas, not the, not the benefit system that provides the banana. Now Hawkins had miraculous stories, like when he had his, his enlightenment experience, he just went off into the desert, into Sedona, to live in a tiny little shed, you know, and he would go out, and then someone would just say to him, hey, do you want some biscuits? You know, and it's like the universe would constantly just provide food when the body needed it, you know, and he was in those states, you know, those states just bring everything you need when you need them, you know, rather than the fear-based idea of I need money, I need to make sure I've got a hundred bananas in the fridge to last for next week. You know, that's like, you know. So it's like someone offers you a banana on the street, or someone just gives you some biscuits while you're walking around without any money or without anything. So those are the stories of the enlightened teachers, the mystics, you see. Yes, is that okay? Should I put it off? Yeah?